doing pranam, offering his dandat pranam to his guru te, because he is going to begin Srimad Bhagavatam. Also he is telling, Jang Swar Bhav Makhila Suti Sar Deepa Adhyatma Deepam Ati Tirtir Satang Samondha. Or this Srimad Bhagavatam, Swan Bhava Akhila Suti Sar this is the abstract of whole Vedic literature, Puran, and all Purans, Mahabharata, Ramayana, Gita, everything. This is the essence abstract of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It is also a Pradeep like lamp. lamp. By lamp, in the darkness, we see something. To us also and others also. So Srimad Bhagavatam. By reading, by following Srimad Bhagavatam, by hearing from any bona fide guru, oh, he can see transcendental Krishna, his associates and his sweet pastimes. Hmm? So, Sansarina Karunya Ahav. Thus they have taught his son. Wow with karuna and also with a great mercy to world these living entities, my Gurudev, Sukhadev Goswami, out of mercy he has told this Srimad Bhagavatam. So we should hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Shortly we should hear, hear that. And then he began to Srimad Bhagavatam. Shabai Pansan Paro Dharmo Jato Bhakti Radho Kaje Ahe Tukka Pratihata Jayatma Swam Oh you and also you should explain Anja Vilashita You should try to be Parikshit Maharaj What? Dying after seven days, and he forget to take anything, water even, no prasadam, no water, no sleeping, day and night, Harikatha Shavad. And only in seven days, he left his body without any suffering and went to Golok Vrindavan. So you should try to hear like Sukhadeva. Om Jnana Timiram Dasya Jnana Jana Samadhyam Chakshurum Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Gurave Gaur Chandraya Radhikaya Nitadalai Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare First of all I'm offering my Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Diksha Gurudev Nitalila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Asto Tarasata Shri Shila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada. And secondly, I'm offering my equal Dandavat Pranams and Shraddha Pushpanjali to the lotus feet of my beloved Siksha Guru Devs, Nitya Pravishta Om Vishnu Pachri Shila, Bhakti Rakshak Sri Dhar Goswami Maharaj, and Om Vishnu Pad Ashto Tarasata Sri Shila, Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, our beloved Srila Guru Dev. And to all of the <coughs> Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, friends and guests, all the Chidandi Sanyasikan, my Dandavat pronouns. We are very fortunate to be hearing this introduction to the most glorious literature on the surface of the earth planet titled Srimad Bhagavatam. And Srila Gurudev has kindly given us this synopsis of the introduction, actually bringing us to that very place. Uh, here, 
he is sitting as the representative of the author of Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasa Dev. And he is seated here before us on this Vyasa Asan. And he is disseminating this very same message that has been broadcast down through the ages for more than 5,000 years. We are hearing this divine message of Srimad Bhagavatam. The most potent uh, spiritual topics that exist on our earth planet today. By hearing which any living being may attain the highest perfection of human form of life. So, in this introduction to Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Gurudev has been narrating the various personalities uh, who are the speakers of this great message of Srimad Bhagavatam. And the questions that were asked by the great learned, learned sages, more than 80,000 sages present there, and they're asking relevant questions. How a human being may become actually perfectly happy in his soul. Not on the bodily level, on the level of this material body, senses and mind, but on the level of the eternal Atma. Atma means self or soul. So the questions the sages were asking was, what is the highest activity that performing any person, any human being, he may become completely atma sam prasiddhati, perfectly happy. So, in response to this, Sri Sutta Goswami, the chief speaker in this assembly, he stated, Savai pung saparo dharmo, yato bhaktir adhoksha jay, ahai tuki apratihata, ye atma sam prasiddhati. Savai pung saparo dharmo. He immediately went straight to the point and he said, the topmost supreme paradharma, supreme activity that any human being may perform, it is called bhakti, pure devotional love. Bhakti, the activity of bhakti performed toward adhokshaja. Adhokshaja means the absolute supreme truth, the supreme reality, the supreme personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, Sri Krishna, who is the creator of the creators of these material universes and planets. And he is the source of everything that exists. And he exists himself far beyond the range of our mind, intelligence, and senses. That personality of Godhead is Adhoksaja, because no one is equal to or greater than him. Everyone is subordinate to him. And that personality cannot be approached by our demand, nor we can, we can demand that he should come down to our level. But by performance of bhakti to that divine personality, uh, which, which type of bhakti? It must be Pahaituki bhakti. It must be devoid of any other motivations other than his happiness to please him. Ahoituki. And apratihata. It must, must not be interrupted by anything. Not that we will do it one day a week, one hour a week, huh? or that periodically at any time we may do some activity of bhakti. But here Sutta, Sutta Goswami very carefully explained it must be apratihata. It must be uninterrupted. That activity must be constantly going on 24 hours daily. And when that activity is performed by the Atma, by the soul, by the human being who has attained this human birth and is now has the capability to render pure devotional activities to the Supreme Being, what becomes the result of that? Ye Atma, Sam Prasidati. Here, Atma, Sam Prasidati has two meanings. It means, Atma means the Supreme Self, the Supreme Absolute Personality, that is God, that is Krishna. When He becomes fully satisfied, 
by the rendering of pure bhakti, then automatically the individual atma, that is our self, the tiny spirit souls within this world who are part and parcel of the Supreme Being. When that pure bhakti is rendered to the Supreme Being and he becomes satisfied, automatically we become satisfied. Just like if you pour water on the root of a tree, automatically the branches, the leaves of the tree, every single part of that tree receives the benefit of the water because it is given to the root. So the root of all living beings, we have all eternal connection with the Supreme Absolute Being, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. When pure devotional bhakti, bhakti yoga is rendered to him, then automatically we receive the benefit. It is distributed to ourself and to all living beings. So how to understand this bhakti yoga process? How to properly uh, perform this bhakti yoga process? Oh, our great acharyas in our line, coming down for thousands of years to the time of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is an incarnation of Krishna in this Kali Yuga age. He taught to his most dear disciple, Srila Rupa Goswami Pad, and Srila Rupa Goswami Pad conveyed these teachings of Bhakti Yoga to the entire world in his literature titled Bhakti Rasam Rita Sindhu. And there Srila Rupa Goswami explained what is the definition of bhakti, so that we may know how to do bhakti and how to avoid something which is not performing bhakti. So therefore he described what is bhakti? Anya bilashita shunyam, jnana karmadi anavritam, anakulyena krishnanu shilanam, bhaktir uttama. Here he is des described uttama bhakti. Uttama bhakti means pure devotion, pure bhakti, which is untinged by anything else. It is the topmost form of bhakti. Just like if you ask for water, what are you asking for? You are asking for pure water. You don't want uh, water adulterated by anything else. So similarly, the understanding of what is pure devotion, uttama bhakti, that is being described here. First of all, he explains, Anya bilashita shunyam. That if one is doing pure bhakti, it will be completely devoid oh. of any other desire. We begin from Ankulena Krishna Anufila. Then come to this point. Okay. What is bhakti and then uttama bhakti? In two symptoms after yes. yes. So in this verse, it is divided into two parts. And the second part is describing the principal symptom of bhakti. Hmm? So there, that symptom is described as uh, anakul yena krishna anushilanam. Anakul, anakul means favorable. Uh, favorable cultivation. Anushilanam. Anushilanam means that with one's mind, one's body, one's words, and even one's emotions, constantly flowing uh, in this performance of activities that are favorable and pleasing to Krishna uh, and are flowing just like an unbroken stream of honey. This is the main symptom of bhakti. So that bhakti, uh, which is constantly being performed for the happiness of Krishna, it must also have the external symptoms, no, the secondary no. symptoms. More thing. What is the means? Anu and then Shilanam. You should describe all these things. Anu means? Naran, Nairam And in the guidance of Guru and Vaishnava. And what is favorable and not favorable by the example of Yasoda Maya and Charu Mushti. All you should speak. So, uh, Nairantarya means constantly flowing, uninterrupted flow. So, Anushilanam refers to this word Anu. Anu means constantly under guidance of Sri Guru, a perfected, realized spiritual master. 
under his guidance, performing these activities constantly and not, with no interruption. Now, there are a couple of examples to make clear this understanding. What is actually pleasing to Krishna uh, performance in the category of performing bhakti. Now, we know that when Bhagavan Sri Krishna came into the wrestling arena of Kamsa, uh, at that time there were two very powerful wrestlers, Chanur and Mushtika. These two wrestlers, uh, they had a, uh, an order and a desire to kill Krishna. That was their motivation. So. Krishna and uh, his friends came into the wrestling arena and actually they were happy. They wanted to engage in wrestling because in the forest of Vrindavan, the cowherd boys and Krishna would often wrestle. And this playful activity uh, in friendship gave great happiness and pleasure to Krishna. So in this wrestling arena, they were also entering and they were thinking, oh, this will be a very fun activity. We will wrestle. Uh, so then when he began, when Krishna began to wrestle with these wrestlers, Krishna and Balaram were wrestling with Chandra and Mushtika. And Chandra and Mushtika were con constantly pounding Krishna and they were uh, locking each other in very powerful locks, wrestling locks. And in this way, uh, Krishna and Balaram were sporting and fighting with Chandra and Mushtika. And Krishna was feeling great happiness actually because he was tasting rust. He was tasting vira ras, chivalry, and uh, sporting. But Chanu and Mushtika, their whole motivation was that Krishna should be killed. So, can we say that Chanu and Mushtika were doing bhakti to Krishna? Because definition of bhakti is anakulyena, uh, favorable for Krishna's happiness. But in this regard, they were not favorable to Krishna's happiness because they wanted to kill Krishna. So we cannot confuse the definition here by taking this statement of Anukul and applying it to Chana and Mustika. Now on the other hand, we see that in the case of Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda, naturally, her whole existence is given to Krishna for Krishna's pleasure as his mother. Every single thing she does, every thought she has is to give happiness to Krishna. But we see that when Mother Yashoda was uh, breastfeeding Krishna and the milk that was left on the stove was boiling over and when Mother Yasoda saw it boiling over and suddenly she began to rush toward the stove to save the milk from boiling over she had to quickly put Krishna down and when she put Krishna down oh Krishna was upset oh Mother Yasoda has stopped giving me her breast milk and he was very upset like a small child will be upset and then he went down from the bed and began to do some mischief. We know that whole story of Damodar Lila. So Mother Yashoda, she made Krishna upset. So can we say that she was doing bhakti to Krishna? Because she did not give direct happiness to Krishna? No, we cannot. Because Mother Yashoda's every activity was for Krishna. The purpose of the milk was for making milk sweets so that Krishna would become happy, completely satisfied by these milk sweets and that she was also engaging the milk in the activity of serving Krishna. So in this way, Mother Yashoda was performing bhakti. So anukul, anukul yena krishna anushilanam means constantly serving Krishna with the attitude that Krishna will be pleased, Krishna will be happy by this activity. So in the other side of this definition, there is the understanding of what bhakti is not. And here it says, Anya Abhilashita Shunyam. This means that if one is performing actual bhakti as given here, then he will also not have any other Abhilas, desires. No other desires other than to please Krishna. In other words, one's entire existence of body, mind, words, emotions, everything will constantly be absorbed in Krishna with no other types of desires impeding that flow. And Ananyabhilashita uh, Shunyam Jnana Karmadi Anabritam. And also Rupa Goswami. Why it has been told Anabhilashita? So why? Why not Anabhilash? So in Anyabhilashita Shunyam, 
there is the extra syllables uh, ita. So here, Chilavishana Chakravarti Thakur has explained that this indicates that a devotee in normal circumstances, oh, he will have no other desires huh, other than performing bhakti to Krishna. He will not approach Krishna for fulfilling his desires. But in an extraordinary circumstance, like an emergency case where he, death may be coming suddenly, oh, then at that time, the devotee may call out for Krishna and, oh, Krishna, save me. So Srila Rupa Goswami has placed this syllable here to understand explicitly that, that bhakti will not be harmed in that circumstance. Why? Because it is natural for the devotee. It is completely natural for him to be fully dependent on Krishna in every time, place and circumstance. So when such emergency is coming, then the devotee completely depends and calls out for Krishna. So therefore, it will not be covered. Like in the case of Draupadi, Draupadi was so devoted to Krishna, but when Dushasham was trying to disrobe her in the assembly of the Kauravas, at that time she was attempting to hold on to her sari, but he was overpowering her. And at that time she called out and raised her hands in the air, O oh Krishna, O oh Krishna. And Krishna himself responded by becoming unlimited amounts of sari. So in that situation, it is still pure bhakti, it is not harmed. So, anyabhilashita shunyam, jnana karma adhyanavritam. And also bhakti will not be covered. Bhakti will not be covered over by the process of developing jnana. Jnana means that one is trying to uh, engage in developing impersonal knowledge of impersonal liberation, merging into the Supreme. Like there are many mayabadis, many impersonalists, and they believe that the Atma uh, can merge into the Supreme Atma and lose his own individual spiritual existence for eternity. So this kind of development of uh, Gyan, tending toward impersonal liberation, oh, this will cover bhakti. And similarly, karma. Karma means self selfish, sense-gratificatory seeking activities. That one is interested and, and one is performing bhakti in order to attain material happiness within this world, on this material level, or even in higher planets of this material universe like heavenly planets, Swargalok, and so forth. This will also cover bhakti. And also activities of yoga whereby a, uh, a person practices mystic yoga, ashtanga yoga, and their intention is to develop the mystic siddhis, or powers, very subtle powers by which they can manipulate material nature. So this will also cover bhakti. So here Rupa Goswami has explained so clearly what bhakti, what pure bhakti consists of, and what are the activities that will be opposed to bhakti, that will negate the effects of bhakti. So, in this assembly, in Nagasharanya forest, Srila Sutta Goswami has given the, also this very clear declaration that it is only by the performance of pure bhakti, ahoitukiya pratihata, which is never motivated by any other activity and is uninterrupted flow for the pleasure of Krishna, this alone will satisfy the Supreme Lord and the soul will be completely satisfied by this. So this is the purport of this verse, Savai Pum Samparo Dharma. Very good explanation. <coughs> if you want to know more detail, you should read Bhakti Rasami Sindhu Bindu. And then this much of what you must read. Then systematic way you can express all this. For Bhitti Mula, Bhitti Mula, there are so many things to tell. Anukulya means those who are favorable. But those who are not favorable, wish to reject all. And those who are favorable for Krishna, not only to please, 
both thing to please Krishna and for the benefit of Krishna, well, whether Krishna is weeping or not. This is your bhakti. You should know that this bhakti covers from last his uh, part from Shraddha. Last fraction. Hmm? Last fraction of bhakti. That is Shraddha. What is Shraddha? Shraddha. Though it has been told, Krishna Bhakti, if you are doing, your life is successful. But the two desire to serve Krishna, this desire is really Shraddha. And from where it will come, and this desire is transcendental. It will only come by Sadhu Sang, by Guru. By mercy of Krishna, it will come in his associates, and from there, it will come in the heart of Krishna. And then outer symptom will be, oh, he will have so much strong faith in Krishna words, epic words, Srimad Bhagavat words, and Guru words. If he had no faith in epics, then no sadha. No, if he has no strong faith in his guru word, no sattha. Even no faith in Krishna words, what he has told in Gita and especially in Bhagavad, then no sattha. After that, sattha, second association of bhakta, then he realized that guru is me. Without Guru, we cannot enter in the realm of bhakti. So must we should take initiation from any bona fide in the form of cheaters. Thousand and thousand of oh, gurus are here and there in this world. They are cheating others. They make disciples only for wealth. But they cannot remove the doubts of the, and also ignorance of devotees and they cannot put bhakti in their hearts. So we should be careful for that. And then Guru Karan and ten primary ang of symptom of bhakti. Guru Padrasya, Guru Siksha taking from Guru Dev, Vishambhaina, Guru Shabai, all these things. Hmm? Without Guru serving, Tad Vidhi Pradipatena Pariparashnina Shivaya. Without serving Guru Dev, oh, if you he will hear no fruit, so we should serve him, obey him. Hmm? And then <coughs> Nishtha, after that, Ruchi. And then Asakti comes. And after Asakti, oh, Shuddha Sattva, Rati will come. Rati is transcendental. So, Bhakti are of two kinds. One is Bhadi Bhakti, and second is Raganuga Bhakti. Bhakti First, we should begin from Vali Bhakti. But by hearing the sweet pastimes of Krishna from any bona fide guru or sadhu, if you have low greed to serve Krishna like Sudama, Sidam, Madhumangal, Shubal, like Nandvava Jasodamaya and more than that like gopis and more to be the Palyadasi of Srimati Radhika like Manjari. So gradually it comes. 
Also, this bhakti is the service of Radhika to Krishna. And that is highest in Prem, Shne, Man, Prane, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, Adirud, Rud, Adirud, Modan, and then Madanakya. Mahabhav, up to Mahabhav in all gopis. Some partly in in Dwarkapuri also something. Queens of Dwarka, Satabhama Rukmin. But after Mahabhav Rud Adiru, not in anybody. And moreover, Mohan also, it may be in Chandravali and others. Moreover, that what? Madanaka Mahabhav. No. Before. In Mohan, uh, all other things. It it may be like in Jasoda and other songs and Jasoda. Lalita Vishaka. But this Madanakya Bhav, not in Chandravali, not even in Lalita Vishaka anyone. Uh, only it be when Krishna or Radhika are sitting together, but by thinking, hmm, they are thinking, they say, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna Radhika? Hmm. So he began to lament, where, where, where? So this is Madanakvav, not in any other. So up to this bhakti, Covers. In this way, I was going to tell that bhakti is of two kinds Vaidhi bhakti and raganura. What is Vaidhi bhakti? Jatra ragan anuvapta pravikti rupajayate sasanen eva shastrasya sa vaidhi bhakti te muchata. Nowadays, Especially in a European country, Russian, uh, in Russia, they are Russia, Russia. <laughs> they want, oh, Russia, that they don't like Vaidhi Bhakti. At once they want to go up to the top of the tree of Prem. Madanak bhav they want only. They don't want to follow by the bhakti. Very dangerous. You should be very careful from this. What nonsense? Sahajiya Vaishnava. In Radha Kulvishi, in Vrindavan too, the Babaji, they gave anyone who don't know how to clean their how to how to be pure after passing <laughs> they don't know no knowledge at all quite foolish and they get them siddha deva and having siddha dev oh you are now manjari of vrindavan and there you are serving Radha and Krishna. And what we can, these unqualified persons thinking this, and they have some widow ladies with them, and they began to test, O oh, Parki Yabhav. Understand meaning? What meaning? First they became Babaji, then Kaj Mataji became Pitaji. <laughs> Very dangerous. And then so many children come, Babaji. <laughs> and very beautiful young lady. So, uh, we see, I have one my old disciples, Sannyasi, Brahmachari, all. Be careful for this. Krishna has told, natural tendency of these worldly living beings 
Even in snakes, even in donkeys, monkeys, dog, hog, especially Krishna has told to Uddhav that donkey always bitten by behind legs of even falls. And secondly, uh, are you, are you, a donkey or happy happy camel no no also you should know that you know she goat and male goat goat if anyone takes or oh, donkey I will tell you beaten by <coughs> even follow and a she goat and male goat. Male goat is going to be killed. <coughs> Shutter house. And there he, if he sees any she goat, a very shameless that goat. goat. He wants to have sex with that she goat. How this wonderful these things. If at that time, at the time of day, so we should be very careful for these ladies to male, male to ladies, vice versa. So very careful for these. So where there is not rag, only by the reading the Shastra that we used to do bhakti of Krishna. If you will not do, then you go to, must go to heaven. Mm. Hell. By fear of this, if anyone engages his mind in bhakti, then it is called bhakti. What is rag? Where rag is not, what is the meaning of rag? Rag means insubal siddham, nand baba jasoda meliya. And especially in his gopi, especially in Lalita Visakha and Srimati Radhika. Rag means love and affection to his last point. By which they serve Krishna and they control Krishna. This is Rag. And that Rag in whom this Rag is there, they are Ragatmika. And Hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam from any bona fide Guru Vaishnava. If anyone has greed, I want to serve Krishna like Subal Siddham Madhumanga. I want to serve Krishna like Mother Jasoda. Hmm? How? Hmm? Nanda Hakim Akrut Brahman Sheya Yeo Mahodaya Jasya Astanam what Nanda Baba has done? How fortunate Mother Jasoda that Krishna being Supreme Lord, he took the breast of Mother Jasoda. So if anyone wants to serve Krishna like Mother, if anyone more than that, what? Like Gopis. Krishna has told what? Napare ham nirvadya sanjujam. I cannot repay gopis because for me they have left everything. Their husband, their wives, their children, their wealth, their body looking, every ornament, everything for Krishna. And Krishna is told him that I cannot leave anyone as you have left for me. So I cannot repay you. Only you can repay by your Good qualities only. Hmm? Hearing this, Gopi is told, O oh Krishna, you are, you have, you have yes, expect, uh, accepted that I am ready of Gopis. Hmm? But really, by telling this, you have owned and we are defeated. 
So, here that mood, more than that, Anaya Ragito Nunam Bhagavan Hari Rishwara Janno Vihaya Bhut. Oh, in the mom, Srimati Radhika is supreme, hmm? most beloved of Krishna. Because Krishna left all the gopis there in Rasastali and he went taking Radhika with him. So surely this Radhika has pleased the Supreme Lord and by the mercy of this Krishna is very happy with that lady. So Radhika. Hmm? But if anyone has that greed, but there should be some symptoms. Only telling that, oh, I have greed. Oh, I have seen Radhika. Not his feet. But I have seen the Navi. Navi means? Neville of Radhika I have seen. Oh, bogus person. Stupid and nonsense. Rascal also. <laughs> If anyone take darshan of Radhika, he cannot be in this world. Only Narad has seen a glance of his Narayan and then has disappeared and told that, Oh, I never seen give darshan to those who are Kujogi, not pure. So, how it is possible? So, we should know all these things. Shastroktya parvalya tanmaya vittanvanta vaidi bhakti riyam kashchan marjada mo. O balava charjaya is still marjada. Those who follow the instructions of Shastra, that is Bhagavatam, Sramadam, Kirtanam, Shmaranam, Padashivanam, Archanam, Bandanam, Dasham. These are Vaidhi Bhakti. Also four, Shadusam, five, Shadusam, Bhagavasraman, Mathura Bhas, Bhil, Sadhaya Murti Seman. Shadusam, Nam Kirtan, Bhagavasraman, Mathura Bhas, Sri Murti Seman. These are five Angas of Bhakti. If you will follow Without apara, very soon prima bhakti will come. <coughs> so, this Raganuga bhakti is very high. Symptoms, by symptoms we can see. Chanti rabyakta kalatan, virakti manasandata. Can you? Can? Shanti Rabyat Kalatan Virakti Mana Shunyata Asa Bandasam. Eh? Not a sloka, not a symptom. Uparit Dada. Because we will go to. Oh, Makan Hulanga Shakananyana Salaga, Chapter Mintam Jena Tasmani Sipro. One shot was a deposit with the Pitakana of Bavan Go by Shuri. As a polite of her mind, humble with respect to the Lord Panam. Let us be the little lapse in the father's book with answer on Russian Haraj and Umsuva Puripraj with the answer on Russian Haraj and all Sanasis and Bamichari and all respectful guests. Would they order to me to discuss about the symptom of Baha Bhakti? Silver books, a silver books, a Vishnu chapter of the path. In Bhakti Rasamrita, Sindhu has given the definition of Bhav Bhakti. Suddha Sattva Vishesatma Prema Sujjan Sama Bhav Ruchi Vichita Smarsin Akridasu Bhav Ujjade. In this verse, Srila Vishana Chakravarti Pad explains that there are two symptoms of Bhav Bhakta. That means Bhav manifested one's heart. There are two symptoms. One is called the Sarubhlakshan and another is called Tadastalakshan. Sarubhlakshan is three and Tadastalakshan, that is called nine 
so nine symptoms. Sarva Lakshan three, that's called Bhagavad Prakti Abhilasa. He is always to desire how to attain to Lord. That's called Bhagavad Prakti Abhilasa. Saurita Bhav, he has so much friendship with the eternal associator of Lord Krishna. And <clears throat> Anukul, Anukulamayin Chesta, all his endeavors have to then serve to Krishna, which is favorable for him. This is, these are the three internal symptoms of Bhav Sadha. Then, nine, there are the external, uh, external symptoms. Tarsha Dakshan very clearly explained in this way. Chandira Prakta Kalattam Prakti Mana Sunnata Asa Vandu Sumutkanta Nama Gane Sadaruji Asakti Tada Gnanukhani Prati Tada Vasati Sthare it is a very clear is with Kanti or Bhattha Chanti. Kanti means if any problem will come in his life, right? his mind is never disturbed. That's called Chanti. Or is his mind completely you are in, <coughs> calm and quiet and engaged with Krishna Seva to Seva. This is called the Chanti. And Parikhit Maharaj, he had given the example of Parikhit Maharaj when he heard mm, this so this he told, oh, within my daughter, my son has given the curse within seven days that touch up the serpent will come and bite you. But when Parikhit Maharaj, he heard this thing, but he, his mind not disturbed. Then he said, oh, 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 that we have to live in this material world seven days, this is my guarantee. So this is called Chanti, his mind not disturbed. So Chanti, Abhartha Kalatam. Abhartha Kalatam, that means he does not waste one moment right, except Krishna Seva. Always he engages his mind, body, and speech. That's called Deha Moi Kaan, Deha Man and Kai Bhakta. And with his three, with his body, with his mind, and with his speech, engages himself to Sad, Guru, and Krishna. And Chantira Abhartha Kalatam. Bhakti, he completely detached from the enjoying the sense gratification. That's called Bhakti. Bhakti, Mano Sunnata. That means he completely free from all kinds of reputation. That means he is not hankari to get any kinds of reputation. That's called name and fame. And Abhartha Mano Sunnata. Chandra Bhutta Bhakti and Bhakti Mano Sunnata. Asa Bandhu. Only his only one hope when I will attain to Lord. Ajata Pachayva Matarankhaga Stannam Jatha Vasvarata Kudartha Kriyam Priyavo Pujitam Visanna Manu Karvindakcha Vidriksha Tetva Vitrasu Recited this verse. Very nice. If I explain more time today. So I am going to explain. Right? So this is the Chandra Pratuna Vrakti Manasun Asa Bandhu only one hope when I will attain my perfect son go Asa Bandhu Samut Kantha or is it Igarvi is coming? Right? Igarvi is coming, Hankari is coming or is yeah, when I attain my perfect son go Chandra Pratuna Vrakti Manasun Asa Bandhu Samut Kantha